is okay if my cat is here. For me, documentary is a way of engaging with um, philosophy, you know, like I'm trying to understand what reality is and I'm trying to understand what the truth is, but it's not because like little 10 year old Penny was like, I want to be a film director. I, I find filming people incredibly difficult. I think it's so rude, like to point a camera at someone just feels like so horrible, like I, I hate it. So archives are just a, a thing I enjoy. When I made The Pain of Others, I knew that was a film that was going to, that was going to upset a lot of people and that people wouldn't like. That. Like the YouTube videos feel like you're not supposed to be watching them. And it's a difficult feeling to overcome. I mean, I feel it looking at the material and I know more than anyone, having spent all the time I have with it, that like the material was made to be public. An illness that a whole lot of people are suffering from. An illness they're not getting any answers to. Not from the CDC, not from doctors. I also knew that people would be upset that I present a kind of like medical mystery and then proceed to not even try to solve it. So that upsets people's expectations of what a documentary is for. There's, and there's other reasons we're also like it's kind of ugly, <laughs> like, you know, the, the, it's not like particularly high production value, you know, what makes this a movie? Like there's there's so many reasons why people would be upset by the Morgellons film. So this video is about being having a disease that is called um, a delusional disease. Doctors think it's a delusional disease. It does make me feel crazy and feel it makes me feel stupid you know I'm like <laughs> but it's real there's a long history of um, women's ailments not being taken seriously being ascribed to mental illness when in fact they were not and on the other hand there's also another way that I sometimes think about it which is that you know we do live in a culture where you know women are not only expected to engage in, but are rewarded for engaging in, like a kind of morbid self-attention. You could say the story is about people being driven insane by an illness that they don't understand and that no one believes them they have. Um, or you could sort of see the illness as a kind of social media disease, um, kind of sends them deeper down a rabbit hole of crazy. I'd like the world to know that when you're a Morigellans patient, you are treated worse than you would treat your family pet. When you're rejected like that, you don't feel like living anymore. You feel like you don't have any hope. I'm always interested in, like, you know, in historiography and who's writing history um, and, and what kind of stories are being written. And also just examining the kind of, like, storiness of any particular given historical account, like the idea that it was shaped by particular people in a historically contingent moment and can always be revisited. If someone had said, like, do we need another movie about Richard Nixon? I would have said, no, why would you need that? You know, so it was really about like discovering those home movies and immediately feeling like the newness of them. The home movies just immediately suggested a new version of that story that wasn't so far outside of what we understand to be true or what we are generally accepting to be true that would be incomprehensible, but suggested a kind of point of view that I thought I had never considered. The idea of, the, of telling the story of the people who supported him and then were betrayed by him I said, oh, that's new. Like, I don't know that story. Especially when you're young in your career, early in your career, you have to stake out new ground. If you're trying to like make art and like push 
push the world of film further into some new territory. You have to do things that people older than you will say won't work. Um, I mean, even as simple as like when I made our Nixon, a lot of people who knew better than me said that won't work. Like, how do you make a movie with all archival footage? And that sounds absurd now because it's now 2019, and now the idea of an all-archival documentary is actually, like, mundane. People are just going to tell you to do what they know works, which is fine, fine advice, um, but it's not particularly interesting, and it's certainly not what, what I want to do with my life, is not, like, repeat things that have already worked and make films that have already been made. So don't listen to advice, is my advice, I guess. <laughs>